You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to Live and Lead for Impact. I'm Kirsten Ross Vogel, your host, and this is episode 306. I have a great entrepreneur today. I can't wait uh, for this conversation and for you to meet her. Her name is Mina Kumari Adnani, and she's an international high performance and business coach for women, a motivational speaker, and a best selling author. She is a qualified solicitor in England and Wales and an attorney in New York. For 25 years, she's held senior level positions in high profile companies. Her amazing story is about losing all of the wealth that she made as a lawyer ever since graduation due to trusting the wrong person to manage money. Mina has managed to find strength, change her career, and make the same money back in just two years as an entrepreneur. So I'm looking forward to our discussion. Welcome, Mina. Thank you, Kirsten. You know, you make my uh, bio sound so interesting. And when you hear it from someone else, you're like, wow, that sounds impressive. That me? <laughs> oh, I want to meet this person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to, I mean, what a tough thing, um, you know, losing it all. So tell me, you know, normally I kind of start with having people tell about their work, but I want to hear like what, sure. if, tell a little more about this story, this experience that has motivated you to, to make your unique impact. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a long story. Let me try and um, make it as, uh, as short as possible so we can talk about so many other things. Yeah. But, um, but um, actually I pivoted from the law since uh, a while and I have been doing more business development sales and marketing for a long time. And in 2016, when I was very, very successful in corporate, I um, got a call and by my financial manager called me to tell me that I had lost everything thing like a hundred percent of everything I owned and so overnight I went from six figure or multiple six figures to zero in my bank account and that was one of the toughest things I have had to go through in my life and you know situations like that will either make you or break you and when I say make you I mean you will no longer be the same person that you started out um, at and as you start growing through that process, you become a person that you really know it is a lot more aligned with your higher self. And so for me, I, it was a conscious decision that I didn't want to become bitter with life. I want to get better. And so through that financial loss, when I um, had to get my thoughts together after like two months, first two months was really tough because you know you still live in hope and you still believe that it was a nightmare you wake up in the morning thinking this didn't happen and it was a bad dream but then you wake up in the morning and then you have this like wave of anxiety and depression hitting your body and you're like no I'm waking up to a nightmare and it's it was really hard to teach myself to show up every day to even put my feet on the ground to even go to work but you know after two months i had to really sit down and ask myself what part did i play in making this happen and it's not a question about judging yourself i'm a firm believer that you know we call um experiences into our lives through our energy and you know we talk a lot about manifestation but i really believe that we manifest things without even realizing it and so I had to really look very deep into what about me caused the situation. And I realized that I was, I didn't respect the wealth that I built because I had this thought process of, you know, I'm too busy. I don't have the time to manage my finances. And also having been brought up in a very traditional family, you know, I didn't realize I had this inbuilt belief that I'm not good with money, you know, which is very common amongst a lot of women, unfortunately. And so I had to really look at that and say, what do I need to change about these beliefs? Because 
coming from a traditional family like mine, I wasn't even allowed to be educated, but yet I still qualified as a solicitor, I qualified as an attorney, and it didn't happen um, with ease. I had to really fight a lot along the way and ask, allow, ask my dad to let me stay one more year in the UK to get my degree, one more year for me to qualify, one more year, you know, like negotiating every step of the way, and then losing everything. And then I realized that, I had this subconscious belief that I wasn't allowed to be successful. And so maybe part of me felt that I needed to give this responsibility to someone else because quote unquote, I'm not good with money. And so that's when my journey began. And that's when I started thinking about how I can shift a lot of these beliefs that I have, how I can rewrite my story because a traumatic event such as this it's going to be a story that you're going to tell for the rest of your life. And it's your choice whether you want to say it in a, an empowering way or a disempowering way. And I said, how, how can I tell this story from a place of empowerment? And then I said, okay, if I can use this story as a way to rebuild myself, then I can help other people believe that they have what it takes to build themselves as well in case they lose their finances or whatever situations they face in, in their life. And that's what I exactly did when I was able to rebuild myself um, in two years. I actually built myself up to seven figures versus the multiple six figures that I built. And so that's, that to me was like a very, very strong realization that anything is possible as long as we're willing to put our mind, heart and soul into what we believe. That's an amazing story. I kind of want to jump back to um, talking about and like kind of make a distinction because you talked about looking for what within you yeah. might have brought this on. And so let's talk through the distinction of because I think it's so important um, yeah. because when we go through something tough, we do. I feel like it's about looking for what's in our control that we can change mm -hmm. or using it as a learning opportunity. And that really it's about feeling empowered to make things better versus that blame. And so I just mm -hmm. wanted to talk about kind of the distinction in mindset um, when you were looking at what within myself might have brought this, because I think that's really important for people to understand. Yeah, it's a good question. And also, um, you know, I, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about how my legal background helped me uh, be able to look at this in a very objective way. So when I went through law school, one of the most important things we learned is what is called an objective and subjective test. And so if we believe that someone like if you get a question on an essay on, you know, someone did something and did he commit a crime at the end of it? The answers, if you give the answers based on your subjective belief, it's not the correct answer because it's based on your beliefs. If we're talking about theft, there is a specific definition to theft and the test is objective. So law school taught me the ability to be able to look at things from a subjective manner and an objective manner. Subjective is when you look at it through your own lens and your values and your beliefs. Objective is when you look at things the way they are. and. For me, losing that finances and then two months later looking at it, the two words that popped into my head was personal responsibility. And I think it is so easy for every single one of us to blame our circumstances, blame other people and blame everything else um, for what we go through. But the question, which is a very hard question to ask is, what part did I play in it? And I was able to ask myself that question without judgment. I was asking my quest, asking that question from a place where I was soul searching and seeing how could I have done this differently? And why did I take those actions? Why did I trust someone else with so much money? Um, and why did I not take the time to learn about wealth? Why did I not take the time to learn about investments? And so that's what helped me to dig even deeper. And that's when I realized that, you know, had I taken that responsibility, had I not started out with a belief that I'm not good with money, I probably would have been good with money. I probably would have been able to invest my money wisely. But 
I wasn't aware of all these beliefs that I had. And so looking at it objectively really allowed me to go back to all the way when I was brought up and thinking about all the programming that I had and the cultural beliefs about how women should be. And so perhaps at that time, I felt I had a little bit of a guilt for being successful because I stood out amongst the women in my community. And it wasn't easy because I felt like I didn't fit in. And I think this is the tragedy of life. You know, you we're all born unique and different. And as a child, we always do things to stand out. You know, we, we um, will dance in public. We will, you know, cry when we want to. We speak loudly, but then slowly we are conditioned and we are told don't speak too loud. Good girls don't behave this way. Good girls don't speak like that. Slowly we are conditioned and then we fit in. But then as we grow older, we struggle because we know we are created to stand out. And this is a conflict that happens within our head. And I think that is what creates self doubt. So to go back to your question about, you know, um, perhaps not a question where you just said, you know, to talk through that. I think all of us need to make time to have this ability to reflect and see if we don't get the consequences that we would like, but to really just look within and see how you could have done things differently without blaming yourself and without um, feeling like um, a victim but coming from a place of empowerment. Yeah, I like that. And I think another key distinction that you made there is um, what I always share is like, don't beat yourself up, like the waste of energy yeah. if on top of it. Um, so yeah, that feeling of I'm empowered to fix this. And so let me use this as a learning opportunity to see what was in my control. What might I do different going forward? Because uh, if we don't take that opportunity, we're kind of missing some of the value that we can get from those really tough experiences. Um, and also doing that without the blame or the beating ourselves up, which, which wastes energy. So it's a focus on kind of identifying where do we have control? What do we learn from it? And then how do we shift things going, going forward? Exactly. And I think what's really important is, you know, I know the word mindset is so commonly used, but unfortunately I really am. I, I feel like, why do we not get taught these things in school, in university, um, throughout our career? Because, it is our mindset that determines our ability to succeed. It is our mindset that, that determines our ability to be happy. And yet there's very little that we're taught. And I think when we're brought up, we're a, lot, a lot of times we're told what we shouldn't be, but we're not really told a lot about how we should be based on values of being a good human versus how we should be based on what's accepted in our culture. So agree. Gosh, yeah, the whole mindset that is so important. It's, you know, and it's also like the stories we're telling ourselves within our heads is what creates yeah. kind of who, how we present ourselves to the world, you know, who yeah. we are, all of our nonverbals and, and what we'll go for and where we'll shrink back. And yeah, and trying to get to that place where we can twirl and dance in public and not feel like we yes. have to be, uh, yeah. you know, hidden and, and smaller uh, than we really uh, are. So um, tell me a little bit more about the work and the impact that you're making in the world. So I work mainly with women entrepreneurs and I have two types of programs aside from working one-on-one. -on -one. one is I have a personal empowerment program called Empowered Women Academy. And through this program is where I really help women shift their mindset. So it's the same thing that I talked about in terms of identity, who we think we are, because most times we carry an identity that is not aligned with who we are meant to be. The identity that we have is a version of us put together by our family, by our peers, by our society. And a lot of us go through life not even knowing who we are. So in this program, I help women come up with this identity which is more aligned with who they are be more in touch with the person that they are and who are who they are meant to be and align themselves with their future vision instead of their past and a lot of it um, is about working through a lot of our past so interestingly i'm not a therapist but 
The women who come to work with me based on self-empowerment are people who've worked with therapists and didn't get results. So I always call myself as a non-therapist therapist because helping them deal with the trauma and overcome them is what helps them align themselves more in the, with the future vision rather than their past. And of course, the second thing is to help women build success and you know create wealth because and I think most times you can't uh, put one away. Um, I'm sorry, I mean, most times both are actually interconnected because a lot of the women that I work with, when it comes to the business, whether it is starting their business or scaling their business, one thing that really keeps them stuck is that lack of self-belief. And that's something that shows up again and again. And it really breaks my heart when I see a lot of women hold themselves back only because they don't believe they have what it takes to be successful. And most of them are actually very, very, very qualified. So it's quite sad. Oh, I agree. Uh, that's part of why I do the podcast to help people make their bigger, bolder yeah. impact and provide those um, techniques and strategies to, yeah, to not, to be more unstoppable. Um, so let's talk now about a current challenge that stands in the way of you making your bigger, bolder impact. So, um, we'll do a little bit of coaching and just see what strategies uh, might be helpful to you that I'm sure will also be helpful to others who are listening. So, uh, what's a current challenge that stands in the way for you right now? Um, I wouldn't say I have a current challenge. I'll tell you that I did have a challenge. And so this cha is about, yeah. So, um, th this is about something current right now. So whether it's building a team or any kind of leadership things, communication, um, yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> one, uh, one, one challenge I have is actually finding the right people to grow. Yeah. I mean, the right, the right, the rights, uh, like uh, looking for social media managers, uh, virtual assistants. I have a very good virtual assistant right now, but mm -hmm. looking for the right uh, social media manager. And um, yeah, I think right now for me, that's the biggest challenge that I'm facing. I, I have to admit, I haven't spent enough time looking. So partly it's about me making time as well, but I've, I've talked to a couple and I just don't feel that they are the right fit. So it's been, it's been that, that part has been a little bit of a challenge. Well, perfect. Cause that's what I do is I help, uh, leaders build high performing teams. So, um, so we, you know, with leadership selection, mindset shifts, all of that. So, um, let's talk about, and, and actually there generally is a mindset shift that's required to start adding team members. Cause we can also be stopped when we're doing that. Cause fears, you know, different kinds of fears can pop up or uncertainties. Yeah, and yeah. one is just around taking on the responsibility of having someone like, is there enough work? Is the money going to be there to um, continue? You know, and I, I'm not suggesting I don't, I'm not, I don't know which fears you have. I mean, you can share yeah. more um, if you feel comfortable being vulnerable in that way. Um, but so there's that kind of fear. And then also, will they be a fit? Will they, you know, how will I hold them accountable? Will the money that I spend on them be, you know, be worth it? You know, will they bring the value? Um, will they be a fit on the team? Uh, can mm -hmm. I trust them? All those kinds of things. Will they have the right skill sets? And so, um, so one of the first key steps that I encourage leaders to do is to really get clear about the tasks that someone will be doing, because those tasks are what will define the kind of personality that you're looking for. And mm -hmm. sometimes when we're a smaller business, just beginning to build a team, uh, the tasks that you need done can be quite varied. And mm -hmm. So, um, so here's a couple of places to start by creating that list. Um, and we don't even have to give the person a title at this point, because let's just see if the task could live, could likely mm -hmm. live within one human, <laughs> yeah. or if by combining all the different needs that you have, it might be really difficult to find the right person. So, yeah. um, so it's getting clear first on what you need. Um, so the, and this step has two key um, values that it brings. Um, and one is like getting more clear and then also shifting in mindset. So, so the one is, um, so start with the things that, you know, um, are on your plate or your virtual assistant's plate that um, it's just too much with which things do you want to delegate? Do they want to delegate? Or if you have others on the team kind of have everyone create the list of, 
um, what's currently got you at over capacity that would be less aligned with your strengths. Cause the goal is to have everyone, you know, working in their strengths too, as much as possible. So, mm-hmm. cause the beautiful thing is, uh, you know, you're good at some things and then other people have strengths that are very different. And a lot of times we minimize our strengths cause they come so easily to us. But anyway, so, um, so have everyone create those lists of what would they love to delegate? Just, you know, they're at over capacity. It's not what they love to do. They're not that good at it. Create that list. The second important key is what things aren't even being done at all that would really bring value. So those go on a list as well. Once you have your list, now you can determine, you know, make that determination that I spoke of, you know, would these skill sets likely live within one person or are they very different? And maybe we need a couple of different people and kind of determining and estimating about how many hours per week, per month you would need um, to have all those fulfilled. So that gets you starting towards the what. I said that that step is, um, has another value um, beyond getting clear, which is shifting your mindset. You can move through the fear of bringing someone else on with the positive vision of what could we make happen if this was offloaded from our plates now, or if we were doing these extra things that we're not even getting to do yet. And so starting to create the list of what would I do with that recapture time and what would that do for the business? And that recapture time doesn't necessarily have to be business focused. It might just be better life balance or, you know, more time with friends or some time to rejuvenate, or it might be some business activities. So anyway, that can help, that vision can help you move through the discomfort of bringing someone else on. And then, um, The next thing is once you've determined, um, you know, is it one or two or three people? What are the specific skill sets that they need? Then you need to think, start thinking about um, the personality that would likely be great at those skills and then designing your interview process, which, and I, you know, I won't go, I won't go into the whole thing, (laughs) but um, if you don't, if you, if those listening aren't familiar with behavioral based interviewing, you've probably heard me talk about it before, but definitely utilize some really good behavioral based interviewing questions so that you get at um, the personality of that person. And they're telling you not what would they do, but what have they done in similar circumstances that they'll be faced with working for you. Mm-hmm. So is that helpful? Yes. I mean, I actually have a list. I am not fearful of hiring people. I've got three people in my business and um, I am looking for a fourth one. So um, recently I just let go of one and I think just finding the right match. And I liked what you said about the behavioral because I think when you hire someone, it's very important that you also find people whose values are aligned with yours. And when you hire people whose values are not aligned with yours, I find that that could be a little tricky. So that's where the behavioral base and a hundred percent, like they will not fit in your culture. And as a leader, you want to make sure that you're creating a culture for your team because there is a culture for your team and it's either being created with intention or accidentally. And if it's accidental, it's likely not aligned with how you want it to feel to do business with you or how you want it to feel for work to work for you or as be as part of the team. And so absolutely. But behavioral based interviewing is how you get at those personalities. Um, So that someone's not talking hypothetically, what would I do? That's why I say stay out of the woods, (laughs) the W O O U L D S. But yes. And so, um, you know, so great. You already have your list. Uh, it's one specific person. It sounds like, um, yeah. so you have the tasks, uh, obviously social media, they need to be, um, have, you know, maybe some creativity writing and also that engagement. So the personality for that. So, um, yeah. but then also what fits within the, within the organization as yeah. a whole. And so I'll throw out one example of, a you know, because we always, I always want someone to be, um, you know, take initiative. Um, so you might ask, like, tell me about a time when you saw something, uh, a process feeling or some kind of challenge that wasn't really necessarily part of your job. What was the circumstance? What did you do about it? What was the outcome? And we always look for those three things in behavioral based interviewing. You know, mm-hmm. if it's uh, customer service, tell me about a time when you really went above and beyond for a customer. What was the circumstance? What did you do about it? What was the outcome? And so by them telling you actual stories versus hypothetically what they would do, you're getting insight into, 
you know, cause the best predictor of future behavior is that past behavior. And so um, telling you those real life stories will give you an insight into how they would behave yeah. if they were working for you. Yeah, that's true. I think another important thing to add also here is I think sometimes as business owners, we make the mistake of hiring people like us without even realizing it. So for example, I'm an, I'm an extrovert and I'm very aware of the fact that if I am not, um, if I don't keep my options open and if I am not aware of the fact that we tend to have a bias towards who we hire, we will end up with people exactly like us, which means our blind spot will be their blind spot. And you want to hire somebody who is, who is strong in the things that you are not so that it's a balanced team and you, you are strong together. So for example, I have one person in my team who's an introvert. And fortunately, I learned a lot about introverts and they're not shy. Um, they're just, they just have a different personality. And as leaders, we have to be very comfortable with that. And I think that's the mistake sometimes we make. We expect people to speak like us, think like us, talk like us. Whereas people come with different skill sets, they have different values, they have um, they have different styles of communication. And over time, it's about finding the balance between what works, what doesn't work, and how you can bridge the gap between um, you know each other when it comes to the communication. Hundred percent, yeah. And as a matter of fact, we want people who are very different from us. Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. uh, when I'm helping a client hire for an accountant, as a for instance, and they're extroverted and you know creative and visionary and all of that, that is likely not going to be the personality that you want for your accounting person because you want that yeah. person. I still remember I use this example so often. Um, it was an accounting position, and during the interview, I was asking something about um, you know. Uh, I don't remember the exact behavioral based interviewing question, but it, it had her tell a story of um, what it was like when she found an error. And she talked about how when she finds like two pennies off or three pennies off, it becomes like a treasure hunt to her. <laughs> And I just thought, oh my gosh, that is the perfect, <laughs> that's what we want. That person, that's the other thing. You don't want to just listen to the story. You want to hear the energy come up and hear the passion in their voice. And, um, and for her, I mean, you could just tell, and she's, you know, she's been working there over a year now and is doing amazing, but, um, but yeah, like, um, we, and I would never be that person <laughs> says like that would be a treasure hunt to me that's you know not but the beauty is like if we sell it we you know we can celebrate our own strengths while we um appreciate others and uh yeah we're all going to have different strengths and bring different things but we do want to have that cohesive team that comes with um you know like you said the the core values need to be shared or you're yeah. going to have collateral damage and ignite friction in the team Exactly. I think those, for me, values are the most important because I think when it comes to skills, it's easy to train people who don't have skills, but it's not easy to get people to change their values. So making sure that people have the same values as you, for me, is I think one of the most important things when it comes to hiring. Yes, exactly. So, um, what words of wisdom do you have for others who want to make their own impact in the world? never stop growing, never stop growing. I think I grew up believing that what we learned in school and university is all that we needed to know. But through life and through what I have been through with my financial loss, I learned that in order for us to get to our next level, we have to be our next level. And so if we want to achieve that level of success, we need to be willing to ensure that we grow because the same you will only create the same results. So never stop investing in your growth, whether it is time, whether it is money, whether it is reading a book, whether it is hiring a coach, whether it is free YouTube videos, whatever the case may be, whatever works for you, just make sure that you don't believe that the way you think is cast in stone and that you can't adapt and change because when we are willing to adapt, when we're willing to change, that's when we are able to create what we haven't already created. 
Great words of wisdom. I so agree. And so thank you for joining me today, Mina. And why don't you share your website and a little bit about your book so that people can find you? Sure. Um, all the information is on my website called strongandshine.com. And uh, my book, my programs, everything is on that site. So, um, you know, happy to uh, hear from any of the viewers who listen to this podcast. If you have any questions, you know, by all means, feel free to email me. It's Mina at strongandshine.com. Great. And as always, all that information, including her LinkedIn, will be uh, on today's show notes. And you can find those by going to defeatthedrama.com, click on the podcast tab and go to episode 306. And if you are struggling with uh, anything, um, some challenges that stand in the way of building your bigger, bolder impact. Uh, I'm Kirsten Ross Vogel. I've been doing this work for 30 years, working with small to medium sized, privately held family businesses and nonprofits. And I would love to chat with you. Um, I, you can go to myimpactacademy.com forward slash book call to just grab a spot on my calendar. You can also check out the impact Academy, uh, which has over 20 years of video, audio and PDF download. Uh, tons of information 24 available 24 7 to you uh, you can check that out by going to myimpactacademy.com forward slash join so thanks again mina for joining me thanks to all of you who are making your own impact in the world um, get out there make your bigger bolder impact the world is waiting and make it a great day thank you kirsten